Have you ever heard of the skill of self-disclosure? I am sure you have heard of self-disclosure or self-expression, but did you know that it is a skill in itself? Self-disclosure indeed is a skill. It is the ability to disclose personal information in the right way. And we can learn how to do that with practice and experience. Self-disclosure is defined as an interaction between at least two individuals, where one deliberately divulges personal information to the other. There are verbal and non-verbal ways for self-disclosure. Things like our clothes, jewelry, tattoos reveal a lot of information about us, even if not intentionally. Self-disclosure is not about revealing only highly private information, but also superficial information about us. One form of self-disclosure could be, I like pizza, that is still revealing information about us, but it is not something that is especially rewarding or costly for us to divulge. Research has shown that self-disclosure is an important skill to have because it plays an important role in our relationships, in building and ma maintaining a relationship, and in validating our self-worth and personal identity. While it is obvious how important it is in our romantic and social lives, is self-disclosure important in the workplace? When done right, self-disclosure in the workplace can create and strengthen relationships, instill trust between one another, improve our job performance, and boost our ability to inspire and lead. All this becomes possible because by sharing information about ourselves, we can connect better with our colleagues, superiors, and subordinates. Self-disclosure can boost openness, it makes us be more open and also appear so, and makes others become more open too as a result. Disclosure is a reciprocal process. If the initiator discloses information about them, the other person is also more prone to share something about themselves as well. In fact, according to research, openness in at least one significant relationship is a prerequisite for a healthy personality. For many people who spend very long hours at work and who do not engage in meaningful relationships outside of work, it becomes imperative that they create this openness in the workplace. So let's first see what some benefits of self-disclosure in the workplace are. 1. Self-disclosure boosts empathy. Even though the most important part of a job is our job performance, we have to consider that our job performance itself depends on a few factors. One of them is the feeling of belonging. We feel like we belong in one place if we feel seen, heard, and understood by others. If we share something about ourselves or if we're going through something, it is very easy to see whether the people that we work with are able to see us and understand what we are going through. If in the company or inside the team, people are able to express themselves and to share personal information with each other, it encourages everyone to join and hence making everyone more empathetic. Two. Self-disclosure helps manage stress. Being able to share our life with the people that we work with allows us to manage the stress that inevitably comes with work, keeping up with deadlines, clients. Three, self-disclosure helps manage difficult situations. No matter the nature, whether they're inside the company or with clients or stakeholders, there can be situations that are tricky or difficult to navigate. By sharing personal information, which could be a personal experience, something that we have learned from someone else, or a mistake that we have made, we show our human side, which allows us to create rapport with the other person. If none of the parties, neither us nor our interlocutor, is disclosing anything personal, then we all tend to stick with our own thoughts and feelings, and we fail to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and understand their point of view and their reasoning. And four, self-disclosure makes us more likable. According to research, people disclose more to someone that they like. People like someone more who discloses to them, and people like someone more to whom they have disclosed personal information. All these lead to an overall benefit, which is better relationships and increased cooperation between people. Now, here are a few tricks that can help us with self-disclosure. Trick number one, to self-disclose or to not self-disclose. To decide whether to self-disclose or not, we have to respond to what to disclose, how to disclose, and when and where to disclose. The decision to whether or not self-disclose depends on a few factors – culture, social network, and individual differences between the two parties, our personality and our interlocutors, and relationship-linked reasons for and against disclosing, and finally, assessment of the current situation. So we may decide to either disclose or not to our interlocutor based on factors that are important to us and that we are aware of. 
For instance, if according to our culture, self-disclosure is not appropriate to do, chances are we will not decide to do it. Some information might be appropriate to disclose based on our interlocutor, for example, based on gender or age. And then there is the current situation that we also should take into account. For instance, if we find ourselves inside the elevator, that might not be the best place to start sharing something about us because of the nature of the place, which is public, and also because the time is limited. Before you decide to either engage in self-disclosure or not, think about these factors and the what, how, when and where to disclose. What if you decide to disclose something about yourself and then realize that you shouldn't have? You might not care, like Larry David on Curb Your Enthusiasm. So I was uh, at the pool yesterday, I, your son. I saw your son at the pool. Yeah. yeah. Kid's got some penis on him. It's pretty good. What, I, what, what are you saying? Your son. It's what penis. Is, wait, what, what are you saying that before? Hey, it's, Remember, a, it's, it's a compliment. What's the big deal? What, what's the compliment? I, I, well, how's it bad? It's, how's it bad? He's got, he's got a nice big penis. So what? Well, I'm not talking about your wife's tits. I, I, I mean, this is rude. Well, you, can say, you can say my wife has nice tits as long as it's complimentary. Come on, you. Hugh, not you, Hugh, okay? Hugh. Hugh. But in the workplace, most of us tend to care. This brings me to trick number two. Notice your interlocutor's stance. The moment after we disclose something about ourselves, both we and our interlocutor have the chance to react to the self-disclosure. For example, if our interlocutor shows interest in what we just disclosed, then that encourages us to be even more open. And it could also encourage us to self-disclose with this person in the future again. Our reactions after a moment of self-disclosure could also impact previous variables. For example, if we are sharing something with a colleague in the meeting room and they do not look comfortable with our self-disclosure, it might mean that they are not comfortable with talking about anything personal in the meeting room, but they are fine with doing that in the office or in the cafeteria. So notice how your interlocutor responds to your self-disclosure. If your interlocutor is not reciprocating or not showing any interest, be aware of that and decrease your self-disclosure. Trick number three, goal of the self-disclosure. Reasons for self-disclosure as well as non-disclosure reflect a self-focus when we weigh the benefits and the costs of self-disclosure, another focus when we feel a duty to inform and desire to educate and when we perceive that the other person will not be helpful, a relationship focus when we want to increase intimacy and closeness in a relationship or, or and when we fear we might lose a relationship, and a situational environmental focus, availability and unavailability of our interlocutor. These reasons reflect the goal that someone has for divulging or not information. Disclosure should be other-centered. Think how your disclosure will affect your interlocutor. Of course, that can be information about us, but not too much or the kind of information that could be seen as inappropriate. Trick number four, time is important. Self-disclosure is a process that we do and learn how to do over time. The strong relationships that we now have in our life have been built based on continuous moments of mutual deep self-disclosure in time and not just one or two that happened in the same day. There are two dimensions to self-disclosure, breadth and depth. Breadth is the range of topics that we can talk about and disclose personal opinions and ideas about. Depth deals with how private the disclosure is. For a relationship to grow, we have to have both breadth and depth in our mutual self-disclosures. But it is easier to expand the breadth of our conversations than going deeper into, deeper, into bigger depths. At the same time, in the beginning of a relationship, it's also safer to talk about a diverse range of topics before we reveal private information about a particular topic. It helps us build relationships and at the same time not risk damaging any relationship to talk about topics that can be considered superficial, such as what movies we like, what we are reading at the moment, what we did over the weekend. Over time, having shared enough personal opinions and experiences about different topics, both parties feel safer to share more private details with each other. Bottom line, keep in mind to not disclose too much too soon. Trick number five, go first. When you are the recipient of the self-disclosure, try to show your openness towards self-disclosure. 
Sometimes people may want to disclose personal information, but they may need to anticipate a positive response before they are willing to disclose. If they feel like their interlocutor will not like them sharing personal information or will even just be neutral about it, they might make a decision to not disclose. The best way to encourage our interlocutor to feel safe disclosing something about themselves is by being willing to disclose something about ourselves first. And finally, trick number six, be prepared to give and take. Self-disclosure, like any other kind of conversation, is characterized by reciprocity. If you are talking with a colleague and they share personal details about themselves and their lives, but when you try to engage and do the same, they don't show any interest in what you are sharing, I am sure that what you would do, as would I, as anybody would, is you would stop sharing. You cannot be certain of how your interlocutor is going to respond to your self-disclosure, but you can always control how you react to your interlocutor's self-disclosure. You show your willingness to share about yourself, but also to listen to others sharing about themselves. But you have to, in the meantime, notice your interlocutor stance and respond accordingly. When it comes to self-disclosure, the truth of the matter is you can never go wrong with not too much, not too soon. As long as you're clear with what is appropriate and when it is appropriate to engage in self-disclosure, the rest depends on time and on your interlocutor. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And until then, have a great week.